Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we're going to talk about how you can get your Unity assets into Godot with like one click. And there's no hyperbole there. That is exactly how this process works. Now you see, I met this guy that develops this plugin a while back. He created an Unreal Engine to Unity converter uh, and I think I... I mentioned it in a bundle that went on. It went out quite well, and, and I reached out to him and said, hey, have you ever considered making something like this for the Godot game engine? And he did. He actually took his Unreal Engine uh, to Unity Converter, and then he made one for Unreal Engine to Godot. And I use this all the time on the channel. It is almost always linked down below. The big thing here is fab constantly giving away assets and if you pick up this converter you can now have access to a huge library of assets that are originally intended for Unreal Engine in your Godot project and this converter does a very very good job at converting. Well I also kind of talked to him a little bit after I said hey well, what about Unity to Godot could you do that and he's like yeah yeah I could do that and he's done it and it is now available so that's exactly what we we're going to look at today how this converter works what the limitations are how you would use it and so on now one thing you want to keep in mind here is you're going to be able to get your assets out of Unreal Engine but it is not going to be flawless it's going to be very very close to flawless especially for static assets but you're not going to get your code out for example that that's just not part of this process so it's not going to convert your C sharp code this is all just about getting your levels your lighting your scene your environment your prefabs all of that stuff out. There's also a couple things missing right now that hopefully he'll be able to add in time. The biggest one on that list is animation. So what you see right here, this is one such um, scene. I'm actually going to go ahead, I picked three different scenes of very, very different types, pretty much at random. This here is one of the Cinti packages. This is the Cinti Apocalypse kit. And I'm currently looking at it in the um, built-in renderer inside of the um, Unity game engine. And I've already exported this one out, and let's see what it looks like when we get it over into Godot. So you can see, we got a change in light. That's just the nature of the beast because game engines have uh, different lighting. I actually, I, I like this lighting better in this particular case. But as you can see, this is how good the conversion works. So basically, uh, perfect. In the case of something like Cinti, these kind of assets come across flawlessly. Now, Cinti does some weird things in their texturing, so the fact that they pull this one off as well as they do, well, that is uh, an impressive trick. So even though they look simple, they can actually be a little bit tricky to work with. Now, I think you're going to notice here, too, is when he brings them in, he actually brings them in in prefab format. So all the prefabs that you would find, so we go back over to uh, the Unity game engine over here, and we check out the prefabs. So here, various different prefabs that are available, all of these buildings and so on. You're gonna look over here in Godot and you're gonna have them all available. For example, here, if I need this um, part of a apartment, uh, it is there. Go ahead and delete that. I didn't think it was gonna be a partial. Uh, so here, dinner sign, diner sign, boom. You need a diner sign, you bring it in. So really, that's simple to bring an asset in. So that is one demonstration. Here we are, uh, again, in Godot. Here we are inside of um, Unity. By the way, if the lighting thing is a thing for you, it's very easily fixed. Basically, I could come up here. I could add this environment to the scene so that we've got uh, a standard environment in Godot up here, world environment, and then I could come up over here, world environment, and we could just make some changes. So one thing you're going to notice to get tone mapping consistent, let's switch over to ACES or AGX, like so, and you're going to get a little bit closer to what we were dealing with on the other side. If we want uh, global uh, illumination turned on, we just turn that on. So you can see the lighting is just set up differently between engines. So if you want to get them looking more and more like each other, you can easily do that with time. Okay, so that is demo number one. Next up, we're going to bring something a little bit more realistic. This is from Nature Manufacturer. You've probably got assets from them. And they're really popular on the uh, Unity Asset Store. So let's, uh, oops, that was my Q key, not my W key. You get an idea. Here is the environment you're dealing with as it exists inside of Unity. Again, we've got a little bridge going on over here. And go up over here. And then eventually, we're going to find a cemetery environment. So that's what this level is actually called. So it's a cemetery like this. So that is inside of Unity. It's been converted out. So now let's go ahead and check out what it looks like in Godot. So here we go. We're now in Godot. Again, you have different lighting between engines uh, that can easily be corrected or changed or whatever via, um, you know, the world environment or the lighting settings. And he's doing his best to remap the shaders over as they go. So they could be 
Um, you know, some shaders may not come across flawlessly, some lighting, and there's where I see the errors most often is a massive lighting difference between the two. Um, it's just the nature of what happens when you see all these things brought over and let's go up and check out the cemetery. So you get an idea. So even when you've got levels that have a whole bunch of, uh, trees and foliage, etc., it does perfectly fine with that as well. So I'm actually kind of amazed at how well he's managed to make these exports work. And yeah, uh, I, again, um, and, and then I'll show you one of these in action so you get an idea of just how fast these actually work because uh, the performance, uh, that's one of those things with Unreal Engine. It can take a little bit of time for Unreal Engine to cook all this stuff out. His Unity performance is staggeringly impressive. All right, so let's do one last demonstration. And this is the Dystopian Soldiers pack. So you can see if we scroll all the way in, you got a number of different characters and so on. Now, the one downside again is some of these things are actually animated. In this case, you're just going to get them in the poses ready to go, not necessarily fully animated. I hope he does manage to get animation in because that would be really frigging awesome. But this is uh, the Maxim uh, Bergramov or something to that effect. Uh, there's a bundle on Humble. I don't know if it'll still be live when I put this video out, uh, but that's where I pulled this asset out just to see. If, so if you needed to get game characters out, you see you very much can do so. All right, so let's check out how they look in the Godot game engine. So here, Dystopian Soldiers and Presto. They are all here. Now, one thing you're going to find here, just a little top tip, you're going to find that a lot of these things, so this guy here is made up of a number of different pieces. So when you actually go to the prefab section, you're going to find that a lot of prefabs go together to create a single person. So here, for example, is part of a mesh, part of a mesh, part of a mesh because so they're very modular in nature. Uh, so if you want to get around that, what you could do is you could import a scene like this. And then if you go ahead and grab any one of these guys, so here, dystopian soldier number two, for example. So it's this guy right here. If you want it as it stands, literally just grab the tree of nodes over here and then you can save this as a scene. So, um, basically save branch as a new scene and that's a prefab. So it's like my, Soldier. Okay, apparently caps lock is on. And we'll leave that as it is. We'll put that in the root and then save it. So now you're going to find uh, in my file system over here, I have my soldier. And then boom, you can bring it out and use it as an individual. So even if some of these things are compounded and you want to turn them into a... Um, a, a prefab out of a different composition. Really, really easy for you to do this after the fact in the Godot game engine, as you just saw in action. And then this thing also has like the physics, the static bodies and so on all defined as well. And again, I do really hope that he gets animation going in the future. It's on his radar. And by the way, he has been really, really responsive to getting these things uh, working. So if you run into a problem with an import and you share it with him, there's a good chance he'll probably get it fixed. He's been like that with the Unreal to Unity. Unity. He's been like that with the Unreal to Godot. And now Unity to Godot, I'm assuming the same thing. By the way, do you have any other ideas here that he could go with? So I'm wondering if uh, Unity to Blender or Unreal Engine to Blender would be useful. Let me know in the comments down below. So I'm going to showcase one more. I'm going to show you how this actually works. Uh, so here we have a Lurtes Studio bundle. And that's why you'd potentially pick this up. You get these bundles for Unity and um, Unreal Engine all the time. Godot just doesn't have the asset store that those other people do have. So having these high quality converters really opens up the world for you, especially with uh, the way that all of these works in that he's creating these Godot ready prefabs because you don't you, you don't use a demo level you generally would use an individual aspect from these things and he's he's making it that way so you're getting all of the building blocks makes it really easy to build up your own library of things okay so here is the asset we got to do a lot of zooming so you get an idea this is what you're working with now we're going to run into um, some lighting issues on this one and I will explain how they could be addressed uh, ultimately, so here we go. There is the level that we are dealing with. So we're going to go ahead and try and export this. I'm going to show you the entire export process in real time. Um, so once you've got it installed, just bring it in the Unity package, import it in, and you're going to notice you have the option of placing a, all those selected materials to cubes. So if you want to export up materials alone or selected assets into a scene. So if you're creating your own scene to do exports, those tools are available for you. Ditto, there are tools here for formatting terrain. But what you're normally going to do like 99 times out of 100 is just come out of here and click export. 
brings up this little window over here and honestly generally all you need to change so you may need to come in here and change the emiss uh, emissive uh, point light spotlight or directional light multipliers because of the way that lighting is handled between the engines can really vary just one of those things to be aware of but what you want to do here is just come up here pick the directory for it so here let's browse to that folder uh, we will create a new, I call this is a Lurtes, so let's call this Lurtes, and select that folder. So that's where we're going to export it out. Okay, so that is it. Now to export this scene, how long does it take? Well, starting now. So, done. <laughs> it's, it's the, yeah, really, it's done. And then now what you do is you fire it up in the Godot game engine. So, uh, I am... Uh, using Godot 4.6, just because I find this one to be really pretty. Uh, so this is actually a dev release, so probably not the version you want to use. But hey, it seems to work just fine for me. Go to Lurtest, Test. You're going to find it has created a uh, project.godot. Um, the one thing that I have found, there is no facility to actually name your project. So you're going to have to rename it after the fact, which is a little annoying. But boom, open that one up. So you can notice you need to Godot, you need to go, you need to Godot. Uh, bring that in. And now this part can take just a, a few minutes time basically because now uh, Unity is going to re-import all of the assets. It's actually, it's not that long. I could probably even leave it running to get an idea how it's going. But this really has nothing to do with the um, a Unity to Godot converter here. And this is everything to do with the way that asset processing happens in the Godot game engine. But as you can see, reasonably quick, not that bad of a process. And then when that's done, we're going to have... Uh, a level file down here that we're going to go ahead and open up. So, oh, okay. It, it's very quick, but when you're like filling time while waiting for a progress bar to, and it's to finish, it, it can be a little frustrating. But if you saw how fast that works, it's staggering uh, how fast these exports work. It, it actually kind of blows my mind. So you see here, it does the shaders. It makes shaders as appropriate, uh, creates all the various different prefabs that you need. Uh, and then here it recreates the original uh, direction structure of everything that you're working with. And then here you've got your uh, TSN. So this is the master scene file that was generated. And we're going to go ahead, open that one up. And here we are. So now we are going inside of the level. Uh, okay. There. And here we are. And again, you're going to see this is where lighting comes in. So you've got a couple of issues with lighting just on that you've got a couple of lights that's super intense. And I'll show you a quick way how you can debug some of this. So some of this you could probably deal with uh, in the export process. So here, that is where these multipliers come in. But what it's done is it's run into certain lights in the scene that have been problematic. Once again, a reminder, you're going to probably want to create the environment. So just come down here, add the environment to the scene, go to the world environment. And then you can just set it up however you wish. So once again, I turn sign distance field global illumination on for outdoor scenes like this. And I change the tone mapping over to either aces or filmic. And then you just get, I think, nicer results. But uh, down to uh, the opinion of the person. Another thing, if you want to get more along the lines of Unity, you can often come down here and just raw change uh, contrast. So there, like if you want to try and recreate your scene exactly, these settings right here mirror uh, what you're dealing with otherwise. But what we're going to generally find is that it's an individual light in the scene. So for example, here, you can see this particular light is getting just blasted by something, some light that is super strong. It might be this one right here, not 100% certain. So basically, you could debug it by going into a particular light. So you can see the intensity values came out like super high. So grab that. So I could come down here and I say type um light and then we get all of our lights in the scene and then basically you could just come in and then reset them almost at a global level like so and then start turning them back up until you get the lighting to where you want it to be or you go through them basically just flip through the lights until you find the ones that are causing problems like there so we just found this here is the problem light. So you're going to have a little bit of stuff like this. Not a big deal. You're going to have little hiccups in your exporting process. This one here, we just, you know, turn it right off. Or we can change the range of it, whatever. And we can fix our scene as a result. So uh, there are going to be little, little things that you run into while doing exports. But considering what you're working with here and how good this comes across looking compared to the original, uh, it, it boggles my mind how good of a job he's actually done with this. So if you turn off... Uh, the lighting gizmos here, boom. So there, knowing that I, I messed with the scene lighting a little bit a second ago, 
and there, I think in some cases it actually just straight out looks better inside of the Godot game engine. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is what we are talking about today. That is the brand new Unity to Godot exporter. I swear, if he had this thing ready to go, like when the runtime fee happened, he would have been swimming in bathtubs full of cash right now. But as it stands, I think this is very easily worth picking up because it opens up the uh, Godot game engine to a huge world of assets that are out there. Uh, there's giveaways every week on both the Unity asset stores as well as fab giveaways. There are humble bundles with Unity and Unreal Engine assets. And with those, you could really populate and get some really great stuff going. Um, and this is an area where Godot really suffers right now, the lack of an asset store. Having these exporters capable of making these bring these projects over and again the really cool thing once again is they bring them over as prefabs so when you want to start populating your world it's like literally drag and drop so it, it is super super useful uh and the the um the existing one, the one for uh, Unreal Engine, very similar results. Again, I do really hope that he gets uh, the additional functionality going in time. He managed to add a whole bunch of things to the Unreal Engine one from when he started to the end. And he's still updating that one consistently. But you see here, cloth, particle emitters, fully customized shaders. So surface shaders work, but fully custom shaders do not. Uh, ECS components don't come across and animations. Other than that, a bunch of things do. You can see here a number of things like, for example, light intensities uh, will not match exactly. You're gonna run into that every once in a while, but if you do, shoot a message to him and he has been super responsive about fixing these things. And I think, especially for a 1.0 release, the quality of what we saw here, these, these results are amazing in my humble opinion. I think that that looks incredibly good. Uh, and then we've got this one, which I messed with the lighting on, still looks incredibly good. Uh, and then we've got these ones come in, and that's the, the individual I pulled out. But here, uh, they look identical, like literally identical to what we started with. And then finally, we have a Cinti asset, which again, looks identical to what we started with. And you saw how fast you can export these things out. And then once again, he does organize everything into prefabs. So anything that you need, if you need a bridge, boom, there is your bridge. So, uh, you know, you generally aren't dealing with these large super maps. You're, you'll be dealing with the prefab files that he has created for you. And again, I'm blown away by how well this actually works. And I, I do really hope to see that he does get that animation stuff in there. But even as it is now, this is easily worth it. Because again, all the freebies that come out there, so you can start building up this huge library in your Godot world. Or of course, if you want to quit your Unity game or quit your Unreal Engine game and you want to move over to the Godot game engine, this tooling makes that process super easy as well. Of course, it does not convert things like blueprints or code or anything like that, you need to recreate that. But the rest of it, your, your world level, the composition, the lighting, the prefabs, all of that stuff are being handled for you. In the meantime, it's doing it in the Godot way, creating Godot shaders. It is super impressive in my opinion. By the way, if you're interested uh, in picking up multiple, uh, there is a bundle with the Unity and Unreal Engine to Godot together. So instead of being 30 bucks a piece, they are 45. So you're getting one of them half price. Um, and yeah, and if you use my link, by the way, it does help support me. I, I mention this program constantly when I get um, the free fab stuff to show people that they should be hoarding all this fab stuff. Uh, and now when we're going to have humble bundles for Unity assets, I will demonstrate how they can be brought over to the Godot game engine using these tools as well. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Unity to Godot, literally a one-click uh, processor for bringing these things across. I'm curious, what do you think? Have you used any of his other tools in the past? And I, I, I leave things off with that question I asked earlier on. So right now he has um, created tools for Unreal Engine to Unity. He's created tools for Unity to Godot and Unreal Engine to Godot. Is there anything else you would like to see? Let me know in the comments down below and perhaps he'll be interested. All right, that's it. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.